Hey, cool, cool, cool. Um, kind of a little general. I'm sure you've been, you guys have talked about this a ton, but I just want to ask, you know, what's it mean? What does this run mean to you guys? I mean, you're the only non-number one seed, you know, getting to the final four for the first time. All these other three teams, you know, they've got a national championship on your on their resume. You know, what's this mean for you guys and for the program? I mean, for us, we believe that we can accomplish something great, you know, this year. Um, we believe we can win it all. So that's what it starts with us believing in order to accomplish something. And then um, as far as the other teams, I mean, I just approach every game like it's it's the same. You know, I don't really look at a, a, an opponent and uh, approach the game different just because of the name on their jersey. So um, it's great to have the great teams here in this um, Final Four, but I'm just focused on Arizona and focus on the next game, which is UConn. Just a quick follow up. What was that moment like afterwards? You know, when you when you guys kind of finished off that game and you guys got back amongst yourselves. What was that feel? What was that moment like for y'all? It was a great feeling. A good feeling, just knowing that you're making history along the way. You know, and um, just looking at my teammates and my coaches, and um, it's just a joy that I felt that I wouldn't want to feel with anybody else. And I'm just super excited to have these people along um, the way with me and. Uh, we're just going to keep going. Like, we, we celebrated that night, and um, and now we're back to work, so. Troy Hutchison, go Thank ahead. You. Uh, this one's for Trinity and Kate. I saw Kate join. Um, I was looking over UConn stats, and they've out-rebounded opponents by 11 and a half rebounds per game, and you guys have gotten stronger each time out. What goes into slowing down uh, the Huskies down low? Uh, I would say just – I mean, stopping them before they receive the ball, make it more difficult. I mean, we normally try to front the post players just because we're normally undersized. So I think just being able to get in front of them and just kind of make it more difficult for them to receive the ball is a start. But, I mean, obviously they're going to they're gonna get the ball and they're going to get some points because they're good players, but we just have to make sure we limit those points to um, the smallest number we can in order to um, just give us a chance, you know. Michelle Smith, go ahead. Yeah, Trinity, this one's for you. Um, I know you may have read, so this will be the first Final Four game ever coached between two Black women head coaches. It's also the first time that two former WNBA players have ever coached against one another in a Final Four. I'm just wondering what that means for you. What's the significance of those two things for you? Trinity, you're on mute. Uh, I apologize. Um, my initial thoughts were that I'm just happy for the coaches, the um, the coaches, and um, and for me being a black um, female, it just gives hope to people in my community, uh, especially younger girls growing up. If you don't see someone doing what you dream about doing, sometimes you may think that it's not possible. So to see um, two female black coaches um, in the Final Four coaching and two, um, two former WNBA players, it just gives my people in my community hope, and I'm just. Yeah, like words can't explain the way the um the way that it feels to see someone um, of color and female um doing something like that. So it's it's great. Specifically, really quick on a follow up that that Adia is a former WNBA player. What do you think that that helps her do for you guys that somebody who didn't play in the league wouldn't be able to do? What's what is the importance of her being a former player in WNBA in terms of the way she coaches you guys? Well, I mean, she understands what it's like to be a player and she's played at the highest level. So um, she's she can relate to us. Um, she's walked the walk. You know, she's not just talking it. So she's already done what we want to do one day. So um, it's easy for her to um, have been in our shoes, have already been in our shoes. And we, it just helps her coaching. I think um, what I'm trying to say is basically like she can – use her past um, playing days to uh, help her coach and it, it helps a lot, so. Thank you. Yeah. And we do have Kate Reese, Lauren Ware, Trinity Baptiste here. So Michelle Gardner, you're up. This is for any of the girls. Um, obviously the pressure seems more on UConn. They're the team that's expected to be there. Do you think that is gonna help you guys just kind of play loose and play a little bit relaxed? That the, the pressure really isn't on you guys? I mean, speaking from my example, coming in my freshman year, we we were the underdogs in like every game we played. So I think that we kind of still 
with a chip on our shoulder in that sense that we've been an underdog before and we've proved to other people that we we are we're more than we're more than that we're a better team so I think that I will play just how we normally do and I think it'll be great but I mean we've definitely been in a situation where we're the the lower team that shouldn't win so I think that there might be some people that um, we prove wrong um, Friday. Ryan Killip here. I guess this also, this is for Kate. Um, what is it just like knowing that you're going to be playing against UConn? I'm sure it's a team that you watch growing up and, and now that you're going up against them and have a chance to beat them to uh, reach the national championship game. I mean, for me, it's, it's definitely a crazy feeling. I mean, I'm sure it is for everyone, but I don't know. It's just, it's so weird because you see them on TV and it's like, obviously everyone knows who Gino, Coach Gino is. So, I mean, it's definitely, it's a surreal feeling, but I mean, at the end of the day, they're a team, they put their shoes on the same way that we do. So I think we need to keep that in mind and just remember that, I mean, we're, we're out there just to do the same thing that they are is to win. So, I mean, I'm excited for the opportunity and um, just to be performing on the biggest stage for women's basketball. Kim Doss. Uh, Trinity, I wanted to ask you, the other night in the game, they kept saying you weren't a three-point shooter. That wasn't your game. What do you think your game is? That's so funny because my, my cousin called me and said that. <laughs> I don't pay attention to what other people say about me. <laughs> but my game is just I'm, versatile. I'm a versatile player. I can do everything. Um, I can score, rebound, defend, pass. So – I don't. I don't put myself into a category of what my strength is. I'm, I'm continuing to get better, to get better every single day, and that's just my goal to be better than I was yesterday. So it doesn't matter um, if someone says I'm a three point shooter or not. Um, I just do whatever I need to do to win, and that's what I will continue to do. Justin Spears. This question's uh, for Lauren uh, as a. A freshman uh, playing your first college basketball season, uh, what does this run mean to you? Um, it's amazing. This is obviously what um, kids dream of as a kid. Just like I grew up watching the NCAA tournament, and I was like, oh, I want to go there someday. So just being here is so surreal, especially the Final Four. Like none of us or no one else besides us really thought that we could make it this far. And being a freshman and going to the Final Four is an amazing experience. And it's obviously cool just to be in this moment, but it's also going to help me for like my later years in college basketball. So, and uh, what has this year taught you just from, you know, handling adversity and also, you know, going through this postseason run in just your first year? Um, yeah, I mean, this year, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> this year has just been, um, it's been a crazy year. Obviously, no one expected this year to go like this, especially my first year. It kind of, um, it was kind of a bummer just how this year went with like all the protocol and stuff for COVID. But I mean, this made it a lot easier, I think, for like other years, because obviously after this, hopefully we won't have to go through something like this again. But I think it just made me obviously a better player with all the stuff that we had to go through. And then also just as a team, I think it brought us closer together as well with just how long we've been together, especially just in this bubble. It's made us closer and um, just a better team overall, I think. We also have Shana Pellington joining us. So PJ Brown, go ahead. Sure. This, I guess, is for Trinity and, uh, and or Kate. Um, you know, everybody stepped up, obviously, during this run. And, you know, you guys are starters and, and you've also, you know, at crucial moments had big plays. Um, can you comment on the plays of uh, that someone like a Lauren or a Helena has come in and, you know, like the other night, Helena had that you know, that little pass on the ground to Bendu for those points on that broken play or, you know, something that, um, you know, how Lauren is boxing out or defending her player or something. Can you comment on what those two players have, have really done for you in this run? I mean, um, you, can go ahead. Go ahead. you can go. <laughs> oh, I was going to say um, Lauren – uh, Helena, Shayna, all of them, everyone who's um, contributing off the bench, are they are X factors. They're, we need them to um, win games. And uh, the the, th the moments that you you've seen um, lately in the tournament is what we see every day in practice. And I think that that sets us apart from some other teams who has a rotation of six players, seven players. 
we have depth. We have people to come off the bench and make big plays like that. So I think um, everyone who comes in and um, has to stay ready. And um, that's the key for us to continue winning. Great. And this one is for Shana really quick. Um, you know, there's four Canadian uh, players on one on each of the final four teams and, and you're facing Edwards, who I believe is also on the uh, Team Canada with you. How long have you known her? What do you think about her game and, and what she brings um, as an opponent now, as opposed to a team member, teammate? Um, well, yeah, I've, I've played alongside her um, on the senior women's national team, uh, like you said. Um, I also knew her prior to that um, at a young age, like before I even got into college, I was aware of who she was. Um, but yeah, she's a phenomenal player. She's a very athletic um, four or five kind of um, big post player, I guess. Um, I think the key for that game and guarding her is going to be, you know, just making, making sure we slow her down, um, not letting her get to the rim as easily. Um, but overall, she's, she's a fantastic player. And obviously, with all the Canadians qualifying uh, for the Final Four tournament, I, I'm super excited for them, um, as well as myself, to get this opportunity. Um, it's a great thing for Canada and the athletes there. So, And just a quick follow. What's it, what's it like for you to be like a teammate when you're playing on Team Canada and now you're an opponent? I mean... I mean, it is, it, it's obviously different, but I think I'm kind of, we're all kind of used to it because we go, I mean, we go against each other in practice all the time with the senior team. You know, we're all technically supposed to be competing for a spot. Um, no team, no team is solidified as soon as we get there. Um, so um, I played, I played against her as well with, as well as with her, obviously. And I would love to play, you know, with her, but obviously we're on the opposing side. So I, I'm for whatever my team needs for my team to be successful, but I'm also, you know, excited for her to get this opportunity as well as, as well as the other Canadians in the tournament. Ryan Kelpier, go ahead. This is the last question for this group, except Shannon, have you stick around for a little bit? Uh, uh, Lauren, I know when you, uh, when you're in uh, travel ball, you said you used to play in Minnesota a lot and also obviously you're the same page, uh, same age as Paige Beckers. Have, did you ever play against her? And if so, what, what was kind of your, your takeaway from that? Um, yeah, my last year playing um, AAU, I played um, with North Tartan, which is actually um, an EYBL team out of Minnesota. So when I was there, I played against her team as well. Um, and she actually, actually used to play for North Tartan before I came there, but then she switched club teams. So um, I knew if, I've known of her growing up, and um, I played against her my last year. That was my first time ever playing against her. But um, she's an amazing player, um, obviously. But, I mean, also just, like, representing the Midwest, there's a lot of good players that come out there that don't really get that exposure. But, yeah, she's a great player, so. What stands out about her game? Um, she's just really consistent and steady. I think um, she can do everything, basically. It's hard to kind of limit her scoring because she's going to go get hers no matter what. Like, um, she creates shots for herself. Um, she also does really good on defense as well, just stuff like that. But she's just really consistent, I think. So that's probably just something that stands out about her. And uh, Shana, uh, Trinity and Kate were asked earlier about kind of the keys to, to winning their matchup against uh, UConn's post. What do you see as the keys to, to winning your matchup against their guards? Um, I think the key to us playing their guards is just playing Arizona defense. I think we've been doing a great job defensively so far, containing other teams' guards. Um, obviously, they're very dynamic. Um, they're pretty good at shooting all around, um, and they can get to the rim. So I think the key to that is just making sure we can stay in front of our person and if we can't, you know, communicating, helping each other out when we see somebody is at a disadvantage in whatever situation there is. Um, but, yeah, obviously, like I said, they're, they're great guards. They're very dynamic. Um, but I have faith in this team and our guards that we can, we can, we can hold them. And, Shayna, um, what, what has kind of clicked for you in the, in the tournament? It seems like you've played you've, – you've improved a lot just in this, in this short span. Um, I personally, for me, I just think it's just confidence. Um, obviously, this is a unique situation for me, you know, having to transfer and everything like that, dealing with that. And then COVID hits, you know, I, I haven't played college basketball in a while, in a while. So um, yeah, I'm playing in a different conference, different setting, different team, you know. So I think the key for this year and myself was just being patient, um, being patient. And then, you know, things will come as they go. You know, I know I've worked hard. We've all worked hard. 
for these opportunities. So, um, but yeah, confidence is, is, is a big thing. All right, Trinity, Kate, Shana, and everybody who just went, you're all good. And Lauren, thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you, guys. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, now we have Sam, Ari, Bendu, and Helena here. So we'll open up for questions. We'll use the raise hand function. Greg Hansen, go ahead. Hey, Sam, uh, what kind of an impact and uh, contribution does uh, Salvo make as a defensive coach? Um, Salvo makes a huge impact. Um, obviously, he is our defensive coach, so he's always the one we're looking to, the coaches are looking to, um, on how to figure out how to stop the other players. Um, he always thinks of like a plan A and a plan B. So if plan A doesn't work out, we know what plan B is right away. So when the games are not flushed or anything. So it's really nice to have a coach like that that's kind of like the defensive specialist. What's his personality like? <laughs> um, so I was a little, so he doesn't seem like it, but he can be a little goofball off the court sometimes. He loves to try and get in with the kids and like um, to kind of understand our lingo and stuff like that. So it's fun to, he's fun to be around. And then on the court, he's pretty serious. He's business a lot, but he will, you know, joke around with us when we need to, but he, he loves what he does. And you can tell by the way he coaches. Justin Spears. Uh, this one's for Sam. Uh, Sam, how much of an influence do you have on the Arizona women's basketball social media accounts? Um, that's really all Adam. <laughs> I just try and give content, but that's pretty much Adam who chooses what, what to post and not post. <laughs> I mean, but, but, but what's it been like just kind of, you know, over the last couple of years, just connecting with the community and I, especially, you know, a year like this year where fans couldn't attend games and then now they can't attend the, NCAA tournament run, I guess, how important is social media now and, and having that influence? Yeah, social media is um, very important, especially during the tournament time. Um, everyone wants to know what we're doing in the bubble. Everyone like is following us. So it's just nice to have the fans that we've had from the beginning. And obviously, since my freshman year, our social media has grown up. I think we're all trying to do stuff. We're going live on Instagram sometimes, posting a lot of TikToks, um, just trying to keep the fans engaged and involved. And uh, what was uh, social media like the, the night that your team uh, punched the ticket to the Final Four? <laughs> um, I think everyone's phone was blowing up, um, especially Ben Dew's. I know Ben Dew got verified the other day, so it was just crazy. I think all of us were just on social media for probably at least two hours, just trying to respond to everyone as much as we can, because we do get a lot of notifications. So I think we're all just trying to respond to everything. Was, was there a, a certain tweet where you were like, whoa, that's pretty cool that they're kind of, you know, giving us a shout out? Um, I think um, Arizona football has been doing a great job of just this whole tournament, just showing their support. They made a couple of videos, a couple of little skits. Um, they surprised the team and did um, watch our Elite Eight game instead of having meetings. So I'm sure all the players were happy about that. But then also just seeing alumni, um, former players, obviously Steve Kerr mentioned us. So just to see people like that, Meg Rapino, that was pretty awesome. I think that's that was my favorite. So it's just been a lot of fun. Thank you. John McFarland. Hey, this one's for Ari. Um, heading into the matchup with UConn, specifically Paige Beckers, um, as a Pac-12 Defensive Player of the Year, as someone who prides himself on defense, how are you viewing that matchup? How, I guess, excited are you for, for that specific matchup as well? I'm very excited for this matchup. Um, I think I've called this since we got here, and I've been telling my teammates, you know, we match up well with them, but she's a talented player. I'll give her that. But um, I'm going to make it hard for her to score, and I'm really excited to defend her. And just more broadly on UConn, I guess, as being someone who's been part of this team and brought this team into the national spotlight, in, into the Final Four, is it exciting that, UConn now stands in the way of going to the national championship, a program that has been to 21 final fours and won so many titles is exciting that it's a program like UConn that is now kind of the next challenge for you guys. Yeah. Um, it's really exciting. I mean, if, even if my mom was in the way, uh, I got to knock her over to try to get to that, but, um, we're really excited to face UConn. Um, really excited. Um, they're a talented team, no world coach. And, um, we're up for the challenge. Um, so we're just going to go out there and play solid 40 minutes. What about Paige? Have you seen just watching film or just watching the season really stands out to you as a, that makes her so talented? She's crafty. Um, she finds uh, different ways to score and she can, she proved that she can score on all three levels. Um, she moves it out the ball. She shoots very efficiently, has high percentages on the court. So, I mean, 
she's a pretty efficient player and um she's active everywhere. Thanks. Brian Kelp here. Uh this is also, I guess, for RT. You said you you think your team matches up well against UConn. Why do you think that? Uh, for one, uh, we're a defensive team. Uh, you know, uh, I'm guarding Paige. Sam's guarding the other guard, Williams. Uh, Bindu gets a chance to guard her, one of her best friends. And just in the inside, the post, we have Trinity and Kay down there. I mean, I feel like we match up pretty well. And um, it's going to be a physical game and a defensive game. And then for Sam, what do you think about the chance to, to play UConn with a chance to be in the national championship? Yeah, I know, obviously, your freshman year, you only won six games. So what is it like to be in this position now? Yeah, this is insane. I mean, playing UConn, I mean, you don't want to get too caught up in the name, but it's obviously it's UConn. They coach by Gina, who is great. Credit to UConn. And like as a freshman, like you watch UConn, like you look up to UConn, like, oh, like I want to be there one day. Like I want our program to be like there one day. And now to actually have that chance to play against them. I mean, it, it's amazing. And I'm so glad we get to play UConn. Um, no pressures on us, as I'm sure everyone, everyone knows. No one expects us to win this game. So we can go out, just play free, have fun and show the world what we can do. DJ Brown. Yeah, this one's for Helena. Um, Helena, what has, um, you know, you keep stepping up and having great uh, moments along in every game. Uh, the other night you had a couple of really great assists, one to Bendu that was on sort of on the ground, rolling that ball towards her. Um, what was going through your mind in, in those moments? Uh, I was just like, I'm trying to help my team like as much as I can. So for uh, like in this like tip, I just like saw Ben do like almost under the basket. And I say, okay, I have to pass the ball like, like there. And I just, I mean, I think I get a kind of lucky maybe, but yeah, I think. Great. And, and what has this whole experience been like for you? What was it like when, you guys won the other night and you were jumping around the court, you know, cutting down the net. That was amazing. Like for me, it's amazing. I remember like before I come here, like saw videos about like Americans, like you come to like, I can believe like now. So I'm having so much fun. Great. And, and for you, hearing about UConn all the time and, and hearing that name. And, and now they're the team that you're facing to play, to get a shot at playing for the national championship. Uh, what's that like for you? I mean, I just want to like enjoy the, the moment. Like I just want to finish with my, with my team, like all the work. So I think we are, we are just going to have fun and try our best. Cool. Thanks a lot. Michelle Gardner. This is for any of the girls. Obviously, you're probably watching a lot of film and there's a lot of basketball stuff involved. But when you've got some downtime and you kind of can't go out and you've got to stay in your own bubble, what kind of things are you guys doing to kind of pass the time? Ben, do you want to take this? Um, me personally, I've just been, you know, doing a lot of homework, catching up on schoolwork because I, I, we're still students at the end of the day. So you know, we still have to do homework and things like that. And then especially like last night or two nights ago when we won, um, I, I was looking all over social media and just seeing all, you know, how happy everybody is for us, um, you know, on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. So just having downtime to see like what, what we're doing and, you know, how we're making history is kind of fun. Any of the other girls have something to say? Were they, were they any fun things that they've been able to do in their rooms or um, I mean, I'm in one class I'm in grad school, so I barely have any homework. Shout out to my teachers. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I've had a lot of time spent on social media. Um, I've been making a lot of TikToks, which they seem very easy, but it takes me like two hours to edit them. So it's very hard. And then we, <laughs> um, I've just been like making like team surveys with us. We just like mess around, like who's the most likely to travel the most or just something like that. Just like fun things to try and keep everyone involved. Kim Doss? Um, so I know TT's been a grad assistant there at UConn, and you mentioned friends um, on the other team. For those of you who have friends over there, um, what's that like? Have you talked to them this year? How are, um, what's that feeling like going against them? Um, 
Yeah. Um, it's crazy having TT uh, on the other side. Uh, after playing with her for a couple of years, it's crazy. But um, it's exciting. Uh, she's my friend, my sister. But, I mean, on Friday, she might be my enemy for, like, 40 minutes or however long it takes. David Kelly? Uh, first, for Bendu and Sam, obviously you guys are kind of living in a hotel room. So, so what did you what did you bring with you to try to make that hotel room seem more like home? Um, I know for um, everyone, the coaches said kind of bring something from home that like reminds you of it a little bit. So, I brought um, some play doh just because I like to have something in my hands, and then I also brought one of my um, dog toys, <laughs> my dog's toys, just because I miss <laughs> Ari, <laughs> just because I miss her, and um, so I brought that. And then they've also been giving us little like um, gift bags of like coloring books, puzzles, little squishy things that we can play with, just anything. But I think a lot of the time people just sleep a lot because today is um, day 14. So we have completely been here for two weeks now. So I think a lot of us are just sleeping and resting as much as we can. So do you make anything with the Play-Doh or do you, is this just kind of to, just to have something for your hands to do? <laughs> Yeah, just to have something. And I also like the smell of Play-Doh, so then my hands smell like Play-Doh after, <laughs> so it's nice. <laughs> and do, how about you? What did, what did you bring to kind of make the hotel room feel more like home? Um, well, my brother sent me back, or sent me my Switch, so um, that's what I brought. That's that's it. So I've, I've just been playing games and doing whatever. And Helena, how about you? Elena, you're on mute. You're muted, Pueyo Loco. Sorry, <laughs> mama. Uh, I, I just read one of my favorite books, so I'm like reading sometimes. And also doing homework, too. Justin Spears? Uh, Sam, uh, how was the connection like with, with your family during this time? Um, yeah, it's definitely tough, like, not to be able to touch them when they're right there, because I have my whole family here, um, but I FaceTime them every day, um, especially after the games, they want to talk for forever, so it's nice after the games to finally have my family there and to be able to wave from a distance, and then I have some more family coming, too, so I'm excited to see them. It's going to be tough not to hug them. <laughs> and how many family members are you expecting? Oh, gosh, probably, like, 15, so got a big group coming. And uh, your, your dog, uh, what kind of dog is it? She's a boxer mixed with a pit bull. Um, she's currently uh, with my sister's boyfriend because my whole family's here. So I gave them her since um, the Pac-12. So I wouldn't have to worry about dealing with her while we're, however long we were in the Pac-12 tournament or here. So I haven't seen her in two months. <laughs> Is that the longest you've been away from your dog? Yep. And it's very hard. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Okay. We got time for three more. We'll go PJ Brown. Yeah, Sam, since uh, Justin already asked you about proxy. I'll have to go somewhere else. So, um, you know, when you guys, I guess it's almost three weeks ago now, right? Before you came here, uh, Jessica probably gave you a list of how to pack, what your outfit should be. Can you share with us what that was like to all of a sudden think, okay, I have to pack for three weeks because we're thinking about that we're going to win the national championship. We'll be there through Sunday. Uh, what is that Sunday, April 3rd or something? I don't know what the date is, but um, you know, what, what was that whole thing like when you, when you started packing and you got Jessica's note about how to do that? Um, yeah, we prepared a lot in advance. She put on our um, weekly calendar, just start laundry, like four days in advance. So everyone has everything. Um, and then she put a list. It's like pictures of everything of every day that we're wearing. So we had to pack like three pairs of shoes, a bunch of sweatsuits. So we have our suitcases are definitely full, but it was fun packing, especially knowing like if you have to pack, like if you only bring a little travel size toothpaste, you kind of have to think about it. Like I might need a whole pack because we're going to be here for three weeks max. So you have to pack, you have to overpack, like oh, pack for three weeks, but then overpack for that because you never know what's going to happen. So it was, it was fun and it was exciting packing for this long and it worked out too. <laughs> was there anything that was really odd or you're like, really I have to think about that <laughs> um not really but um we did this visualizing thing before we left where um we were able to um 
cut down a piece of the net in Mikhail. And because we were visualizing this is where we want to be in the tournament. And so then we um, we were supposed to bring that piece with us and then in the um, hopes of switching it out with a new one. So which we were able to do. So now we swap it out and we have our new one from the Nets here. Matt Ward. Hey, everybody. Um, so I have two questions. First one's for anyone. Um, just in terms of e e experience, I know, uh, you know, obviously UConn's been here um, many times, but in terms of experience, I think they only have two players who have, who have played in the tournament. So um, do, you, do you think about that at all going into the game how, and how, maybe how little that matters this time around for them, number one? And the second is for Ari in particular. I know you're not thinking about the other side of the bracket at all. Um, however, when you look at the point guards, in the final four, you know, with you and Beckers and um, Zaya and uh, obviously, you know, Kiana very well. Um, does that add, I, I know you don't need much to get motivated, but does that add any extra motivation for you kind of going in knowing you definitely paid, play against Paige and maybe against one of the other best point guards in the country too? Yeah, um, I'll find anything to get motivated from, um, but I mean, it's not, it's nothing any extra, but I mean, it's just another game, you know, they put on their shoes, just like, you know, like you said, they're talented point guard as well. And, you know, different styles of play, but I'm definitely excited. Um, I'm up for the challenge. I love playing against other talent. All right. Last question, Greg Hansen. Hey, Ari, if, uh, if an athletic director from another school called you in a few years and said he was considering hiring Salvo, what kind of a recommendation would you give him? What would you tell the athletic director? No, no, I'm playing, I'm playing, I'm playing. <laughs> I love Salvo. That's, man, love that guy. Uh, he's, he's a very genuine guy. Um, he cares about you, cares about your well-being. Um, he definitely knows his basketball stuff. And um, if he, you know, if he gets the opportunity, I mean, he'll be great for the position. And um, that'd be really exciting. I'd definitely tell him, hire me, you know, but I'm his favorite. <laughs> <laughs> but nah, um, it'll be exciting. Is he what you would call a defensive genius? Uh, he's a defensive guru for sure. And uh, like Sam said, um, he always has a plan B, like he has a backup plan if uh, they shred our defense. But I mean, and with him, he also, he lets us players, you know, if we see something on the defensive end, he lets us add our input and he really like considers it. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Aries, Sam, Helena, and Ben, do appreciate your time. Thank you. Okay, guys, we have Coach Barnes here. And so we'll start with Shane Dale. Hey, Coach. Uh, I know after you uh, guys won the Elite Eight, uh, got or got the Elite Eight, you said uh, only President Obama believed in you to get that far. Um, well, only he, not even he believed you guys would get to the final four. Uh, and now you're, you're a big underdog against UConn. Do you enjoy having that kind of, you know, like no one believes in us attitude. Does that really feel you guys? Coach, you're on mute. There you go. You have to, you have to answer the question because there's a lot of yelling. Sorry, Sorry about that. Say it one more time. Okay. Sorry about that. So after you, you all advanced the Elite Eight, uh, you mentioned that only President Obama believed you all would get that far. Well, and was, not even he believed you get to the Final Four, though. And now, of course, you're big underdogs against UConn. Do you and your team enjoy that, being the team that, like, really no one seems to believe in? Yeah, we do. And it, the, the um, thing about Obama, that was just a joke because we hap I happened that someone sent me his bracket and right. the bracket just showed us in lead eight. So it was kind of more of a running joke. I wasn't even serious. I'm sure someone probably even filled it out for him. But the fact is we were in there because with all the other media, we weren't even um, like we weren't even talked about in this region. So I think that that was more of it. But um, yeah, we are underdogs. And I think the thing for us is we don't care. Um, if we would have listened to other people, we wouldn't have even been in a tournament or here. So I think for us, um, there is zero pressure. We're playing our best basketball right now. So just to go out and have fun, that's what all we're doing. And it's really hard to prepare for um, momentum. And um, we have momentum right now, and we are playing, we're playing well. So I feel like you can be anybody for one game on any given night, for sure. Lori Riley. Hi, Coach. Um I just, I have two questions. One is, um, what do you remember from playing UConn back in 1998 in the uh, Sweet 16? And my second question is, I'm just curious how much um, your coach, uh, Joan Bonvicini, had influenced you, you know, to become a coach and, you know, how much you 
you know, what your coaching style is like, you know, compared to hers. Yes. Yeah, so I don't remember a ton about, um, you know, UConn way back then. It's been so long. I've played on so many teams since then, but I do remember that they were really good. They had an incredible player uh, who's now an awesome coach named Shay Rolf, and she's one of the coaches for, for UConn. She was like the star player, and it's funny because Sue was out hurt that year, so Sue and I were later teammates, and Shay Rolf was the one playing me. So it's pretty, we kind of laugh about that now because we're all friends, but um, I remember they were really good, and that was also a tall order, order at that time. Um, so I think for us, you know, and, you know, when I thought of what I love to do in college and the style of play that I really enjoyed, it was the aggressive, tenacious defense that Jones instilled in us. And um, I used to be on the top of the press. We used to run and jump and press for 40 minutes. So that was fun. I thought about it change. Um, And Hughes, Lynn Dunn, Jenny Busick, Ann Donovan. Um, I've been coached by some really, really good coaches and I've learned a lot. So I think just from all my experiences, I was able to take pieces and drills and ideas from a lot of coaches. And most of these coaches I still talk to today. So um, just kind of take a little bit of what I learned from different people. Because I think when you play for a coach or you're in an organization, there are things you love about their styles and there are things you don't like. So I remember as I was getting more experience in my coaching, I would write in a book the things I like about the program, the things I like about coaches, and the things I don't like. And so um, you want to make things your own. So I learned stuff from Kevin McGuff, who gave me my first coaching opportunity, and from Mike Neighbors. So there's a lot of things I've kind of taken from all of them. You know, I think that's what coaching is. You borrow things from other people, and, um, you know, I think that's the smartest way to go. Michelle Gardner? I'm mute. Okay. Uh, thanks, Coach. Um, one thing I wanted to ask is obviously this is the first Final Four where there will be two Black women as head coaches of their team, yourself and Don Staley. Um, how does it feel to be part of that history? And, you know, obviously you've talked about your role both as a mother and a Black coach and how far you all have come in that regard. Um, I think it's really important because I think representation is extremely important. And it's funny because the last few days I've found out a lot, <laughs> like, cause it's not stuff I like when you're so involved in a moment, you kind of don't know about a lot of that stuff until, you know, the media will bring it to attention. Like I was the first WNBA player besides Don to go to the final four. Those are things I never knew. So um, I think it's, it's, it's incredible to be representing, um, you know, black female coaches at, in the biggest stage. So this is the biggest stage for women's basketball. So I think it's an honor. Um, and, you know, to, be someone behind Don Staley. Don Staley is incredible. She's our Olympic coach. She's a proven winner who's done amazing things for women's basketball. So to even be in that conversation with someone that great, and um, I think it's an honor. But I think just me and her representing things for so many women, especially this year with everything that's going on in the world and every, all the inequalities we see with women um, and the disparity even at the NCAA, I think it's it's amazing to represent a small minority and just for us to have the opportunity that we had because without our opportunities, we would not be successful. One quick follow-up. Uh, you kind of touched on coaches. You took some things from earlier, but even younger, when you were like a younger player, maybe even as young as high school level, were there any coaches that you really, really looked up to that were at the collegiate level? No, because um, rewinding like when I was in college and stuff, it wasn't, it wasn't like, Years ago, I remember athlete. I, you know, my dad was a pro football player, but I was a good athlete. So I just had kind of it in my genes. Um, I remember starting to play basketball, and there weren't even opportunities for me. Like there was, there wasn't like a fifth grade girls league. And she kind of gave me, she kind of started that itch for me. And after that, I just fell in love. Um, and basketball for me has changed my life. It's brought me to like over forty countries. It's enabled me to see the world and meet different people. And then it's allowing, it's enabled me to coach and do something I love to do where it doesn't feel like I work. So I, I appreciate basketball and I'm thankful for it. Okay, we'll go PJ Brown. Yeah, Dia, um, you know, different players step up in, in different games and, and we've talked about how, 
you know, in crucial moments, you know, it's been a team win. Aries been playing phenomenal, but it's really been a team win if you hadn't had certain moments from these players. Um, can you comment a little bit about Helena and what she's done these last few games to really step up and, and, and make you pl- play the best basketball you're playing all season? Well, I think the first thing is like, we're peaking at the right time. I, I was a little bit um, discouraged after the UCLA loss and just the way we kind of were playing in the Pac-12 tournament. I didn't feel like we played our best. Um, but I think after that, we got a lot better. I think the practice in between, the mental and physical break, for us just to kind of reset after a long COVID year was crucial for us. Um, but yes, the whole team has really stepped to their game, led by Ari, no doubt. Um, but I think Ari just finding a way to get her teammates involved and making great passes, not forcing anything. Um, getting Helena these big shots and Helena stepping up and making those big shots. She she didn't have her, her and Sam didn't have their best games last game, but they made the most important shots and they counted. And then Helena does little things like she, the ball that was turned over, it was like rolling on the floor. She tapped it to Bendu, got a layup. That was a huge play. I mean, those were daggers in the game. So she's continued to show up with really big plays. If you go back to the Texas A&M, 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 A&M game, uh, <laughs> sorry, couldn't sit it out. And they're all looking at me like, um. so in that game, there was a, Helena made a mistake, a turnover, and then she went and had a huge block with her left hand. So she continues to make really big plays and just find a way to help our team. And then um, the same with Sam, Kate. Trinity, I mean, everybody has really stepped up when needed and made big plays, and and all, they're all helping us and contributing defensively. We'll go to Justin Spears. Coach, you're very active on social media. Uh, that night that your team went to the Final Four, at che- you know, checking over social media, what was that like? Um, it was good. I think it was also good. We wanted that win for Bendu, too. Um, Bendu came from – she cho- she dumped me to choose Indiana, and then she got smart, came back to Arizona. So we were all laughing. We all said that win was for Bendu, and Bendu was just walking by. But, um, it, I mean, it was, it, it was kind of surreal. It's been so busy here. I honestly have not been that active on social media because we've been really busy. But um, it's, it's just really cool for me to have all my former WNBA players, teammates, coaches – GMs um, to have like just all these different relationships and people excited about what we're doing and talking about Arizona basketball when Arizona was just like not even a thought nationally at all, not even a thought in the Pac-12. So um, it feels good to do it at your alma mater in the way that we've done it. I mean, we've done it pretty fast. No one would have thought that we'd be the final four at year five and no one would have thought we'd win the NIT year three or you know, and, and I'm sad for this organization that last year we didn't go to the tournament. I think we would have had a tremendous amount of success last year. But even despite that, without the experience, we still are finding a way to put our best product together at the right time. And to me, that's what winning a championship is about. That's how people sneak up and win. Is uh, It's a very hard thing to prepare for, to prepare for momentum. You, don't, you can't prepare for that. So we are, have the right momentum at the right time. And I think we have a chance to beat anybody. So is it hard? Yes. But I mean, it's, it wouldn't be fun if it, or you know, satisfying if it wasn't hard. And then in the the WNIT season, you utilized social media to bring people to McHale Center for that run, and then ended up in a sellout in the championship game. What's been the uh, benefits of social media for the NCAA tournament run this year? Well, there hasn't been any for this year because uh, there it's it's such a different situation. I think that if we would have had a typical year like a non-pandemic year. I would have for sure been blowing up social media, you know, inviting people down to Texas, but there's just so many different layers now. Um, it's, it's, you know, in Texas, Texas is a little bit different. There's no mass, everything's open here. So you walk around, it's, it's a little different. It doesn't look like we're in a pandemic at all in Texas. Um, but we use social media for other things. I think, you know, I was talking to Ari a couple of days ago and, you know, she's probably gotten thousands of more followers just here in the tournament and myself and our Arizona account. So people are watching us. They're excited about us. They want to follow us. I think people love um, to, to support an underdog. And um, so it's fun for us. I think that social media is a great platform to just, you know, for recognition. And I mean, um, we just use it to our advantage when we can. So I haven't been as active as I should have been. And then lastly, for me, um, is there a Mount Rushmore of UConn basketball players for you? 
Uh, yeah, there is. But I think, you know, because a lot of my closest friends have played at UConn. So I have so much respect for Gina and Chris Daly and everything they've done. Um, it's a phenomenal organization. that I don't even know how it was built, in such, built into such a dynasty. Um, so obviously, I think that their success speaks for itself, not only with accolades, but you're kind of surprised when they're not in the final four. So that's just how elite the program is. So um, a couple of things I'm happy for. I'm happy that, you know, I'm coming from the best conference in the country. That's the Pac-12. And we have two Pac-12 teams in the final four, which speaks volumes to our conference. Um, and, you know, we have a tough game, but every game this time of year is really tough. Um, I'm coaching against a legend who's one of the best in the business. And I mean, thankfully for me, I have to coach, unfortunately, I have to coach against Tara, who's another legend <laughs> a few times a year, so with three times this year. So um, I get my fair share of that. But, um, you know, at this time, it's, it's exciting. Um, we're blessed to be here, but we're not just satisfied being here. We're trying to win. I mean, we've came this far, so why not go for the gold? And, um, you know, we're excited. Kim Doss? Um, about the, their program and the other programs, you talked about how you only have one McDonald's All-American. The other teams have at least six, it looks like. Um, yeah, what does it mean about your program that you're able, you were able to build this far without those? And what does it say about your players? Well, I think it says a lot. First of all, it's all about the players. I'm just along for the ride. They put in the hard work. They do the sacrifice. They have sacrificed a tremendous amount in a COVID year, and it has not been easy. So hats off and all the – they deserve everything that they're getting. Um, I think for us it says a lot about our program because we don't have some of the talent that other teams have. Um, so I think that it's the kids that have just – I mean, found a way to get things done and it's exciting. It's exciting for me to be a part of it. Like coaching, it's fun. Coaching this team is fun. I love this team. Um, we've been through ups and downs this year and I think it's normal, but it's all been worth it. I wouldn't have changed anything. Um, so I think everybody's excited, hungry. Um, they don't have a, a scared look in their eyes. They don't care who we're playing. They just want to go out and win. And I love that. I look, love when I look into their eyes it's like, okay, we're ready. You know, it's not like a look like, oh man, we're here. It's like, we don't care. So I love that. And I think that's what we've kind of instilled in them and um, that's who they are. And so uh, it's fun. It's fun coaching it. And um, I like taking my chances with this team. I, I don't, I don't care that we don't have 10 McDonald's all Americans. Um, I care that we have kids that will run through a wall, that they'll do whatever's ass, that they fight, they play with passion. They give, um, their hearts at all times. So I, can, I can't ask for anything more as a coach. Greg Hanson? Adia, if you could step back and evaluate Salvo, the coach, from a neutral perspective, what would you say? He's a very good coach. Um, he is a great basketball mind. I'm not just saying that because he's my husband, obviously. Um, so I think that what's helped me is that we're very different in some things. He, um, like just different philosophies on certain things, different, we've learned differently. I, I, I come from more of a player's perspective. He comes from more of a study perspective, but he's been a head coach. So he was a head coach for over 10 years. So I think his poise in the games and his, um, his eye for things really helps me. And I think the thing that has really challenged me and made me a better coach is that he's not afraid to tell me the truth, whether good or bad, whether I like it or not. <laughs> and like the truth, whether it's something I have to get better at something I don't like. I may not like it. I may not talk to him for a couple hours, but, um, but it makes me better. I think that when you have other staffs, I think there's a, there's not going to be a situation where maybe your assistant coaches will tell you the truth about some things. Cause it's hard to tell your boss, like the truth about some things. Um, I don't feel like our staff's like that, but it's normal. He's going to tell me more as just my husband. Um, and he's very good at skill development and just like game tactical things and has a good feel for the game. But he, he's also grown up around it. Like we have Mateo here at six. He's, a, he's five, but turning six. He's here every day with us. That's how Salva was with his dad. So his dad is a EuroLeague head coach. He's been head coach for 30 years, one of the best in Europe. So he learned like from him when he was a baby, basketball. And that's all he kind of knows. So hopefully we're molding our son into that. But um, he's, he's helped me and He's a really good basketball mind. Now, the thing for him, Greg, that's a sacrifice is that Salvo's aspirations um, weren't to be a, a Diaz assistant coach forever. And I think because we're married and we have a family and stuff, he has put his aspirations and his life goals 
on the side to be with me because he knows that if he's not going to be a head coach staying with me. Right. And we do, ideally for our family, we don't want him to go out and be a head coach somewhere. So he sacrificed a lot. And, um, you know, he, he wanted to be a head coach and that's what he coached for 10 years to do. And then, you know, coming here with me, he couldn't do that. So I do recognize that and appreciate that. And I think we make a really good team. And um, I, I think we're good for each other. And I think we do a good job together. Thank you very much. I got, hey, play we- <laughs> I got the players watching. And I am hard on him sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> we got time for these last six hands up. Jordan Ham, go ahead. Hey, Coach. Um, obviously, a lot of talent on the, on the court on both sides. But um, Paige and Ari seem like a, a pretty big matchup there. Just what do you foresee on Friday night, what that matchup is going to be like? It's a, you see, you see these two, see these two funny girls. <laughs> yeah, Ari, what does that look like? You already did the media, right? <laughs> no, it looks, um, it's really exciting. I think that, you know, it's a senior against a freshman. I think Paige is a phenomenal player. Um, you know, I've watched her all through AAU. She's so good. She's going to be like the next Diana Tarazi, um, or even different. She'll write her own story but reminds me a lot of her swag and her composure and her confidence. She's just amazing. Um, I think that it's a great matchup because I think very different, um, they're different athletes, they're different styles, but they're both really, really good. So I'm excited for that match. I think Aries excited. I'm sure Paige is excited. I think it's great for women's basketball. Um, you know, I, I don't know what else to say. I think they're just both really good point guards and they score in different ways. And I think I have different strengths, but it's going to be exciting. I'm sure. Ryan Kellip here. What do you see as the keys to the, to your team beating UConn? Uh, you know, they're really good in transition. Um, you know, they run a lot of the chin actions that fortunately for us, we've been able to guard all through the Pac-12 because like every Pac-12 team pretty much runs chin. Um, but they're just really gifted offensively. Um, I think one of the keys is going to be obviously not, a, not getting beat back door, not allowing easy three-point shots. Um, we need to control the tempo because if we, they have a lot of different ways to score and they're really good. So we have to play them honest and have to play really good defense. Um, I, I don't know if they face a, a lot of pressure. I don't know if a lot of teams are silly enough to um, press full court or to do different things, but well, that's what we have to do. That's kind of what we do. So we're not going to change what we do. So um, need to be aggressive, need to play solid defense, need to slow them down and transition and just make them work for shots. If we're going to take punches. They're going to hit some great shots because they're a great offensive team that's extremely talented. They can score in, diff- in different ways. But um, we have to make it hard for them to score. And then we have to be able to go and score on the other end. Chris Bone? Yeah, Coach, you mentioned earlier the Pac-12, uh, in your opinion, being one of the best conferences in the country, if not the best country, uh, conference in the country. What do media, obviously looking forward a little bit, Stanford on the other side, Tara Vanderbilt, like you said, uh, coaching that team, what would mean to you to play them in the final and have an all Pac-12 final potentially? I mean, it would be amazing. I think just for me, the first thing is because I've never been there. For me, it'd be amazing just to be there um, because it would just be, it would be like a dream come true. Um, but having, if it was all Pac-12 matchup, it would be phenomenal. It would show proof that our conference is the best in the country. When I think when you have two Pac-12 teams in the final four, it's pretty big. I think that's proof in itself. But, yeah, it would mean a lot. I think there's so many different things. Um, I think on a a lot of different levels, it would mean a lot. Like if it was me against Don, it would be the first time two black coaches have ever been in the finals, you know, playing against each other or coaching against each other. Um, You know, if it was myself and Tara, it would be Pac-12. You know, so I think there's so many different scenarios on both sides. If it's Gino and Don, you know, there's a lot of different um, scenarios. But I think just to get there – would be amazing but we're not like as a program i'm not like oh we just at the final four we've arrived it's like we're already here we've already been in the hotel for 15 days so why not go for the go for it all so um you know we're going to do our best we know it's a it's an uphill battle we know it's hard um but all we can do is give it our best shot and then everything else will happen the way it's supposed to david kelly Hey, Adia, two quick questions. Um, one, agree or disagree with Kim Mulkey's statement that there should be no testing at the Final Four? And two, if not in the near future, if maybe, say, 10 years down the line, there was a head coaching opportunity for Salvo, would you consider stepping away from a leadership position yourself to allow him to, to follow that dream? Yeah, so the first question for me, in my personal opinion, is 
I, I don't I don't agree with not testing. Um, I think because when I think of like, I, I do understand the reason. I understand like wh why the comment be made because obviously we want to play right now and that could jeopardize playing. But I think that um, from my standpoint, the most important thing is the student athlete and their health and safety. The most important thing is in basketball right now. So in my opinion is we need to still keep on testing, but we're in a bubble. We're in a safe bubble. So we, if we're doing everything we've been doing, we're safe. We're not around anybody else. We're making the right decisions. So I think the NCAA has a, done a very good job of keeping it controlled and keeping us safe. Um, but I think you have to because the last thing I would want is like my players to catch it and have a lifelong, um, you know, something that's devastating later on in life. So I do think we need to keep on testing. Um, this, to answer your second question, if 10 years, maybe 15 years down the line, um, I've achieved what I want to achieve and I felt fulfilled um, in coaching, and I wanted to reverse roles. If he had a tremendous opportunity, I would possibly step away. But, um, you know, I, yeah, that would be a tough decision. I think it would depend on, you know, what we're doing. Are we winning championships? Like all of those things are factors. Um, but yeah, I think that at this point, you have to do what the best thing is for your family. And I think the best thing that makes us happy. And right now we're happy and we're winning and, and we're um, in a place we love and you know, I think that everything's, everything's perfect, but I think that you always have to think about decisions, you know, cause he's all, he's sacrificed a lot for me to be a head coach and for it to be in America. When our, our, our plans were not to live in America when we first got engaged, I was supposed to be living in Europe right now. <laughs> and as a woman, I would never have an opportunity in Europe because there are less opportunities, but so we'd cross that bridge, but I would possibly think about that if it was a great situation. Troy Hutchison, two more. Tiro Hutchison, go ahead. Okay. Uh, so, Coach Barnes, uh, backtracking to after your guys' final four win, I asked Terry about that moment of cutting down the net, and she was saying that you had her practice, well, the whole entire team practiced that moment. What went into you thinking of that idea, and what is the purpose of that, if you could explain well, that? Well, that was actually supposed to be an internal thing. <laughs> that was not supposed to be made public. Um but they don't know because the whole purpose after the selection show, we did it and we actually sent all the media home because it was supposed to be private, but it's kind of got out there. Um, but I'm a really big on like, like a visualization and like envisioning yourself for the moment. So I thought like a great idea would be to actually practice what we're going to do because no one, and at the time I know they thought it was silly. And I, I said to myself, okay, they may think this is corny, and this may not be good. How are they going to buy into it? But they really bought into it. We went after the selection Monday. We went to the court. We played, um, what song did we play? It was it, um, oh, We Are the Champions on the Jumbotron. And we climbed up on the ladder and we cut a piece of the, um, the net. And then we were, symbolically, we were supposed to bring a piece of that net to the final four. But we had to say in the circle what we were going to bring to achieve this goal. Um, on the court, off the court. And we were going to give to our team. And I thought it was special. After that, we had like a celebration because we were celebrating going to the tournament, obviously. And um, the players got into it. We had poppers on the floor. We were acting like we were celebrating. And if they had a speech or something, they had to do it on top of the ladder. So like some of them were like getting the crowd up, like kind of like I did. Um, so we all did it, including myself. And then it was awesome to um, that we thought about that. And then to sit there and at the regionals be, you know, cutting down the nets i think that was that was amazing that was really cool because we we like we envisioned it and then we lived it so that was special but yeah it was supposed to be a secret so now that the world knows you know hey like we did it but better that we did it and actually lived it than doing it and not living it okay last one pj brown so idea um you know since you've won and and you're gonna play in the final four um, on Friday, what other kind of, I know this is a weird year and all these other things are happening, but what kind of pulls have been on your time besides scouting and getting ready for your game? Wait, what kind of what? Sorry. Pulls, have like outside pulls and, and obligations and stuff. Yeah. Um, oh gosh. Well, there hasn't, so we've kind of just been like hotel um, testing, practice back. Like there really hasn't been anything else because we're, we're not able to go out to dinner. Um, so we're ordering food into like, I'm, I'm in this like conference meeting room. So 
this is kind of where we are for not in our room. And so um, it, it's just, there really hasn't been anything else. So tonight, actually we did one thing. We went on a boat ride. So they organized a week ago, every team went on like a 30 minute boat ride. And so we went on the river, river um, walk, like took a boat ride. And so that, that was cool. That actually got us out and got us to, you know, we were able to do something different. But besides that, there really hasn't been anything else. Um, haven't had time for anything else. And it, the days have not been bad because we walk across the street for testing. That gets you out and you walk a couple blocks. Then you come back. Then you walk to, to practice. So you're, it's not like you're stuck in the hotel room all day. But we're not like going to top golf and <laughs> do anything like that. But tonight, um, it's been organized for all these teams in the Final Four to go to the zoo. So tonight will be our first outing where we're actually going somewhere. And I think for all, a lot of us, it's the first time I've done anything like that in a year. Like I haven't been to any like zoo or anything like that that we normally do with our kids, never um, in the sense of the pandemic. So I think for most of the players, it's their first time. So we're going to the zoo and we're going to feed giraffes. So I think it's really, mm -hmm. I've done that and I love giraffes. And actually Trinity, giraffes are her favorite animal. And Ari hasn't been to the zoo since she was little. So I think they're really excited. We're going to go for an hour, hour and a half, but trying to do something special because we have missed that team um, bonding. We normally have a lot of that. I, I pride myself in that, like as a coach for this program, but we haven't really done it because we haven't been able to. And at times I've tried to have asked and it's been like, oh, no, no. But, but that's another reason why no one got COVID on our team. We were very safe. But, it, but it's been very hard on the players. So I'm happy they get to do something fun. Great, thanks. All right, thank you, everybody. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, guys.